and mushroom death wow they are so dangerously low here so for today's video i'm going to be showcasing my new obsession i've been playing far too much of the aphelios lux deck that i shared the last time and so unfortunately that meant not as much brewing as i would have expected so i wanted to try something new and this is the deck that i've kind of fallen in love with just because it has some really insane turns some pop-off moments if you will largely because it draws a bajillion cards and it sometimes gives you mushrooms uh puff cap victories which is also fantastic so i'm going to go through the list really quickly we're going to play a couple games and you'll see how it functions so the basis for this deck is you draw a lot of cards so what i wanted to do was take the old teemo plus hex core foundry concept and, and if you're not familiar with that the idea is that foundry lets you draw a bunch of ammo but by also making your opponents draw additional cards they're more likely to run into mushrooms thus making teemo more effective so i wanted to kind of take that and pair it with twisted fate because twisted fate now yes it's a very like specific moment but if you can end up with multiple copies of stress testing and rummage in your hand it becomes insanely easy to level up twisted fate and even more so if you are rocking things like foundry so uh, it is not uncommon to play him and then he levels up the next turn like it, it's more common than i would have expected with a deck like this now this is not refined i think that there are uh, some changes to potentially be made uh, maybe one more get excited for uh, replacing one pick a card i don't know this card is still really really good in a deck like this so i go back and forth but uh, we're gonna go through the list here real quick pool shark this is mostly used for chump blocking and i very rarely play this on turn one this is usually more uh, like after tf is on the board or when i'm trying to dig for him but i've got enough mana that i can then play him so really i end up playing this around like turn three or four more often than not and then the body is just there for chump blocking now uh, jury rig is here because you're pitching it to rummage or get excited stress testing kind of the same thing it's mostly for pitching to rummage for your instant twisted fate levels up but also the stress testing is nice with pick a card as well if you just have a pop off turn but then you draw like all the, your top end and when i say top end i mean your four drops because this is not a very expensive list in terms of mana cost uh, but sometimes you actually can get some solid benefits from playing this just to remove fleeting the other nice thing is because this is a burst spell if you've already leveled up twisted fate there are times where even if you don't have fleeting cards in your hand just playing the burst spell to get the triggers is very relevant so stress testing and rummage are here for the twisted fate stuff and to cycle through your deck uh teemo is here for the puff cat package mystic shot is a spell which matters for peddler uh, and it's also just great removal in the format right now there's a number of very choice things to hit with it uh, i'm running investigator for similar reasons to running pool shark so investigator here is nice because the three attack means you can block fearsome units it's all players draw one so after you get a bunch of puff caps in it can sometimes help push damage it helps you draw which again helps the twisted fate there are just a number of benefits to running this so running him is a three of get excited here is for dealing with like a felios and sometimes if i'm being honest you just throw this nexus uh in fact there are plenty of games i've played so far where you know you're throwing this at the nexus when they're at like seven but you know they're about to draw you know two or three cards off of foundries the next turn and you're hoping the puff caps finish them off but because of a felios being so popular right now that's the reason i was considering maybe you reduce this by one because the the deal three damage has been kind of a big deal but you also draw so many cards in this deck that running this as a two of hasn't felt like too much of a hindrance yet i don't know uh foundry pretty self-explanatory it helps almost your entire uh deck out the biggest issue with foundry is that in some games it can be hard to figure out when to play it because you don't have like healing in this list and so you have to be very conscious of using your health as a resource and if you're not in a safe tempo position to play this don't play it like i know it's kind of the point of the deck but this is much better against slower control lists and against aggressive lists there will be times where you end up pitching this like it's entirely fine 
to pitch this to rummage or get excited or whatever if you need to because against those faster lists it's probably not going to matter anyway uh peddler we have a lot of spells we've got the teemo package so it, this just helps out really peddler is to inflate the puff caps so that when a leveled up teemo hits you just get maximum value with the doubling uh traditionally they get somewhere between like 15 and 20 puff caps by the time i'm connecting with a leveled up teemo uh, Wump is here because it also helps you out in a number of ways. It gives you extra cards to pitch to uh, Rummage, for example. It gives you extra ways to trigger Mushrooms for Teemo. And those first spells can help a leveled up Twisted Fate get his triggers in response very, very quickly. So uh, Wump is actually really great for helping out your lineup. And then the rest of your top end Twisted Fate, kind of the point of the deck. And Zap is just here because it's... Uh, Card draw, elusive to help you with the chip damage, helps you find some of your other tools. Zap is just Zap. Zap does Zap things. So uh, this is the list. I will put the deck code, at least for this current version, in the video description. As I said, I'm not convinced it's fully refined yet, but I'm having a lot of fun. So deck code. I'll also put a link to uh, Mobilytics as well. And with that being said, let's go play a couple games. Ooh, I don't know. I was just about to say, I think this is going to be some sort of mono target. And I, I don't know if we are well positioned against a list like this. I think we want the opening Teemo. I think the Wump, because of the start with Teemo, is okay. We really want to find, I think, Rummage, Twisted Fate, and Foundries here. Of cat peddlers work as well. I guess we're just gonna go with the the full Teemo experience, if you will. So here's where you hope for no Zoe to block. Deck like this might even run Sparkle Fly on two, but even just getting the one crack at this would be ah. Oh, well, we don't have the Mystic Shot in hand, so we can't slow play this. So it is what it is. This is a list that I think we're not necessarily favored against largely because of the sheer healing power that a deck like this traditionally has. All right, so now we'll play a Peddler. We don't really have many of our draw engine type stuff. Also, their top end is really strong with the Celestials, and so we kind of have to race that. So we're going to try to get our chip damage in. Just kind of keep this moving. Next turn, we'll have to decide if we want to be greedy and go double Peddler before the Wump or just develop the Wump. I think it'll depend on what they play. So uh, they're also on Temple. We'll just double up this then and bank the spell mana here so that we can also take this open attack. Interesting with the rig because it could potentially be even one more damage. And I feel like every damage here helps, but I think we're going to develop Wump. If I thought we were going to play Zap, then I think you play this because you're going to get that mana right back. But I think we're going to develop Wump and Pool Shark. All right, so now now is where they start to go off a little bit. And we have to decide how we want to tackle this. Yeah, I think it's Pool Shark. Again, we can play these to trigger the Puff Caps, but we can do them at burst speed in response to things. So barring like a, a hush or something that's going to shut one of those down before they die. Uh, we've got time. No foundries yet. So foundry would be interesting because then you would have a, a reason to maybe jam them. The TF here is nice. If it survives, we've got a lot of draw power to maybe trigger that. That's going to make them rather large. Okay. I see you. I see you. We've got a couple of chump blockers here, though. So we're fine in that regard. And I think here... Even though we've got the full spell mana. 
I think you still take the draw. Because we're going to be pretty close to leveling him if they don't have a hush or some sort of removal answer. Because we can pick a card this turn and then go into draw this next turn. As I'm recording, my son is walking in. Monroe, you can't, you can't do this while I'm recording. Shut the door, buddy. I can't right now. You've got to shut the door. Daddy's trying to win with puff caps. Okay, so they also went and played a Zoe, which is pretty much going to connect. Not a lot we can do about that. I think... I think we just pass for now, because they still have an attack, and you know the attack is coming. And I think here we actually get rid of the zap. Let him think it's luck. And take the rest. And the reason we get rid of zap is because this for the same mana cost as zap gives us two card draws next turn. So that we can get really close to leveling that twisted fate. And with them playing this, we should be fine for TF to make it to next turn. Oh, now we've got to make a decision. I think we just do this. I wanted to save it for next turn, but this is a lot of mushrooms that we can jam in right now. And with the extra cards we're going to get from the pick a card, we should have plenty of stuff to still rummage away. So jamming that up to like 28 puff caps, I think makes the most sense. This is always problematic because it means our Teemo will likely never connect. Speak of the devil. All right, so our TF will trigger off of a rummage. Plus a guy. So let's start with the rummage. We're going to get rid of the jury rig and the zap because we're trying to be mana efficient here. A couple of foundries is also kind of nice. But I think for now, we'll take this route. Oh, the testing there is also potentially interesting. Interesting, interesting. So there's the healing. As I said before, that target matchup is a bit rough because they've just got a lot, a lot of raw power healing and great top end. So we're going to end up getting to a point where we're praying. But if we can actually get rid of this Zoe and then connect with Teemo, we'll get a good chunk of puff caps in there that we can maybe then double foundry next turn and connect with but this this is of course a pretty big if so we're gonna go with Teemo here <laughs> levels we'll get this draw and another mana to work with which is obviously a pretty big deal now they could have a third Zoe in hand but this combo here should take her out and if they don't have an answer then we will try to connect with the Teemo something for all so all right so the cascade makes us a little bit sad We could still swing with the team of forcing them to block. It, it still effectively gets rid of the Zoe before they have any chance to heal it while they have no mana. Gotta drink. 
And as we are in a position where we are trying to push as much damage as we can to outrace their healing, I think that is relevant. So I think we're going to do this, actually. None of this is unexpected, but we get rid of two bodies. We still have this to chump block here if we really need to, but we also have TF triggers. Uh, we do also have this that we could develop now if we really wanted to spend all of our mana and potentially force some more puff cap action. I think we will. It also gets two damage on that, which means that red card has a shot at removing it. We could have played this before attacking and just overwrote our one drop, but... All right, so we got some direct damage. That should be helpful. Uh, plenty of spells here. We're going to just go with this because we've got spells to potentially trigger the stun here. What we're worried about is a, a second one, but the second one won't have the lifesteal. So we'll put this here and we'll say this goes here and this goes here, which takes us down to one, which means no foundries, but we can do that next turn. This pushes a good chunk of damage while also threatening to stun this, which is the important piece. Gets a lot of potential mushrooms in there as well. And with them going down to four, they'll need to develop some healing at some point or we can really push it. All right, so they're going to save that, but... <laughs> Wow, they're going to almost kill themselves. All right, so they, they can heal here. Oh, I was going to hope for like a net more damage off of the mushrooms, which would have been quite comical. All right, so the stun goes off. Spells go off, so we get more mushrooms and we get a surrender. All right, that's a good start. Let's try it again. Outplayed. Interesting. It's been a while since I've seen Lee Sin paired with Zed. I mean, I don't I don't hate it. I think it's entirely a reasonable deck. It's just usually Zoe, but I, I like seeing this. Now, you know, there's an argument to be made that maybe I should have mulliganed a bit harder here on some of these cards to try to find Mystic Shot. Mystic Shot on Curve would be a pretty big deal here, but wasn't wasn't really thinking. Let's go with the Shark just to draw an extra card next turn. I don't like playing at turn one because there are so many things that can go wrong if you don't have like a little bit of mana banked. Even here, it's a bit risky because if we top deck like TF here, uh, we're not we're not gonna be a happy camper hey uh do you remember remember when i said i need that mystic shot so we could develop a peddler to rummage for that mystic shot and i normally like to save these double rummage hands for when you find twisted fate there's also the problem of if I even if I find Mystic Shot with the spell mana banked, they might have an answer for it. So I actually think we are just going to develop this. We're just going to develop this, eat the three, take the block, and then maybe wait for a more opportune time to try to deal with Zed. All right, a couple of different ways we could go here, but I think that makes the most sense. All right, so at least one of our rummages is essentially free now. Yeah, that's great for them.
that's great for them not so much for us so zed here because of the overwhelm is basically gonna level up this turn unless we top deck twisted fate and they don't take an open attack but both of those seem rather unlikely so we are on a really short clock here and it's mostly because i mulliganed incorrectly wow i was gonna say they they don't take the open attack there they are asking for it um i think we just eat it right for now I mean, it's a lot of damage. And Zed is ultra scary, but. At the moment here, I'm not seeing a much better alternative. They also have the Lee Sin. Well. I'm not sure we can win this. Unless I find. Twisted fate like right now Because if we find him next turn we we can absolutely pop off and level him and then that makes a pretty big deal. Okay. Okay. Okay We're gonna start by playing the mushroom cloud because we're just gonna get our spell mana back And that's not part of our Our plan here So this will put him at two of eight. So we can actually, we got the double stress testing. So we can actually uh, level him. Bad for the teeth, though. Like right now, if we really want. And I think we do in fact really want, so. Let's just go. We'll say jury rig and a shark. Oh, I thought for sure we were going to find one of our two drop buddies by now. That could be problematic. He'll level next turn, which is when it's most important, but that means we also need to save some of these answers Never know what hit him. it's gonna be a reasonable amount of puff caps it's gonna also depend on what they do whether it's an open attack or not because an open attack means that the zed clone is already still attacking before i can stun it I mean, they have to open attack, right? They just win with an open attack. Because we don't have enough direct damage, sadly, here. If we can survive this turn, I actually like our chances of winning a lot. The problem is, I don't think we survived the open attack. Should be burst spell, burst spell, open attack. And we do not have the appropriate answers for that. Wow, no burst spells. Okay. Um, so we are mostly just looking at how we can try to soak as much damage as possible. has us at least temporarily surviving but they've got all this mana all that mana I mean we're dead to a bastion so 
so you have to assume that's what they have and then they just get the victory but even if we had shoved somebody in front of here like zap to soak then we still lose in that regard oh my gosh it's gonna it's gonna go off they don't have what is their hand do they just like have only copies of zed and lee sin forever like i'm legitimately confused They have a healing potion. All right, that was not something that I expected. Touch, okay. Remember when I said I like my chances of winning? Maybe I don't. Maybe they just got like a bajillion sources of healing. Those are all fine though. Yeah, the, the dragonlings are fine because we're just attacking with elusive units. All right. Wow. Those are some great shots. So hush into blocking is very real. Palm is fine. We'd much rather see that than a hush into a block. and mushroom death wow they are so dangerously low here um all right let's see if they have the deny and then if not there's still plenty we got okay we get there wow wasn't a mushroom death the way i wanted this i think would have got us there though but we will take it so that is uh back-to-back -back wins with my new obsession i love moon lasers still but uh this twisted foundry deck is also a lot of fun